We are in the book of Acts, chapter 27. And uh, we're going to read a few verses. We're going to go down to verse 25, and then we'll back up to the last verse in chapter uh, 26, uh, verse 32. Apostle Paul has went before Agrippa, Festus. He's went before different governors. He's been tried, falsely accused. They've tried to find fault with him and try to find him guilty of a crime in which he would be put to death. But they couldn't get it. They couldn't find Paul worthy of a crime to be put to death. They couldn't find anything wrong with him except he was just a crazy preacher that loved Jesus, that he was just filled with God's grace and the mercy of the Lord. And uh, that's the only thing they could find wrong with him. He was just crazy for Jesus. I hope that's the only thing we can find wrong with you. Amen. Let's stand and go to the book of Acts, chapter 27. Been going verse by verse through the book of Acts. And we're going to be looking at some things tonight that I believe will help us. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, that would be Rome, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into the ship of Adramita, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when he had launched from thence, he sailed under Cyprus because the winds were cantankerous or contrary. And when he had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Panthelia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycaea, and there, there is uh, Myra, the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Sidious, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, that means we didn't stop at Crete, we bypassed it, and over into Sol Solomon. And hardly passing it, we came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because of the fast, that fast is the day of atonement fast, was now already because it was past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the landing of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, they didn't like fair haven, the more part advised to depart thence also. If by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is in a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close by Crete, but not long after there arose against it a tempest wind called Ecrelandon. And when the sh ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Well, they were courageous, let her drive. <laughs> and running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. 
which when we had taken up, they used helps in undergirding of the, of the ship, and fearing lest we should fall into the quicksands, strike sail. And so we were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, whom I serve. God sent an angel, and I served God. And that angel came and gave me a message, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let's go back to the last verse of chapter 26, and let's see what is transpiring. Then King Agrippa and Festus, Agrippa was the king, of course, and Festus was the governor. Agrippa said this man might have been set at liberty, but if he had not appealed unto Caesar, it was Paul's desire to go to Rome. God put it in his heart to go to Rome. I mean, God will put things in your heart to go. And God put it in Paul's heart to go to Rome. It was at Rome he would die, and it was at Rome where Caesar didn't need an excuse, nor did Nero need an excuse. And his head ended up in a wicker basket sometime later. But before that happened, Paul was doing his fourth missionary journey, missionary trip. He was leading soldiers that he was chained to, to Christ. And you can read the book of Romans and see just how successful Paul was when he was in Rome under arrest. What a, what a preacher Apostle Paul was. They set forth to go sail to Italy. And a storm came. And it hit hard. And Paul warned them, you need to stay at Fair Haven because it's hurricane time, it's storm time. And they did not want to stay at Fair Haven because it was too small. They were not satisfied, so they wanted to sail on to go to another place. Let me tell you, friends, when you start being moved because you're not satisfied, you get in trouble. And Paul told them, I fear that we will be, the ship will be damaged and even lives will be at risk because this is stormy weather. I want to use for a subject tonight God's weather channel. Let me be seated. God's weather channel. If you read the 27th chapter of this book of Acts and you see the account of Paul concerning his trip from Caesarea to Italy, did you know that sailors on the high seas, even to this day, study this chapter 27 and 28 in the book of Acts? There is so much navigation, so much insight in this chapter 27 about the travel that many captains of ships that sail have studied this chapter 27 and some of them don't even believe the Bible but it is full of so much truth and navigation it would kind of be like chapter 27 is kind of like captain's log uh, captain's log 58 AD they're setting off to go to Italy to take a prisoner, several prisoners, by the way. In fact, if my math is correct, about 170 prisoners 
are going to be taken to Italy, to Rome. And many of those prisoners will fight as gladiators in the great Colosseums as fighting to the death because Rome was so enamored by the fight and by the bloodshed that many of these prisoners were already sentenced to death and they would be fed to lions, they would be gladiators, and they would fight to the death, and the mob was just filled bloodthirsty. That kind of describes the land we're in today, especially when it comes to abortion, just bloodthirsty. People don't have any respect for life. And when we look at this, we see that Rome, America, the other nations of the world, like to look back at Rome and say how disgusting, how pagan, how cruel they were. Yeah, they need to look in the mirror because it isn't much better in the world we live today. As I said this morning, we're kind of cushioned in America. We're kind of in the eye of the storm. But trouble's coming. And there's trouble all around us, and there's storms coming all around us. This is an interesting passage of Scripture. When you, I, I want to begin by just saying that, uh, well, I want to ask you a question. Who and what was in this ship? Now, the first ship they got in has a strange name. In fact, I don't even, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it but right, but Adamitium. That's probably one of the first electric-powered ships. Well, with a name like that, a lithium battery, sure. Battery, a lithium battery. Now, you do know I'm teasing. I mean, don't throw, don't put on sackcloth and, and, and get your shorts in a knot. Just, just get, get right. The, the ship was not a good ship for them to travel. They were probably cramped. They probably didn't have much room because the scripture says in the verse 37, we didn't read that far, but in verse 37, it says there was 176 people in that ship. And so when we look at who was in the ship, we know that there was 276 people in that ship. And when you look at it, we know that three people, Paul, Luke, and um, Aristarchus from Macedonia was in that ship. Luke and Aristarchus was Paul's buddies. And a Roman citizen could travel with his slaves. And so I guess Luke decided he'd be the slave doctor. And Aristarchus probably thought with a name like I, my, I have, I might as well be a slave anyway. So they loaded up with Paul. And the three of them head out. So that's three of the 276. We're getting there. I said, we're getting there. Then there's the captain of the ship. And then there's the master of the ship, the owner of the ship. And now we've got five. Boy, we're getting close. There's only 271 left. And they're getting ready to sail. And then we stop and think the centurion's won. I want you to notice it says in verse 1 that Julius, the centurion, uh, he was of the Augustus band. Now, a band could be 600 to 1,000 soldiers. But each centurion was given the responsibility of 100 soldiers. So you take 100 soldiers plus the Saturn, and you got 101. Now we're getting there. 101, we've already counted to 106. Wow. That leaves 170 prisoners left. That's what was on the ship. The most precious cargo there was Apostle Paul, Luke, and Aristarchus. But I would like to add that there wasn't just 276 on board. I'd like to add another one. 
His name is Jesus Christ, the master of the storms. He was on board. And I'm thankful for the fact that Jesus Christ is on board with us. Because the forecast looks bad. You see, they were at the Fair Haven, and it was a small place, and they didn't like it. it the soldiers were disgruntled. It was probably a pathetic place to winter at, and it was already uh, the time of, uh, of the um, atonement feast, and, and so that put it somewhere around October, September, October in our time, it was the time when hurricane season would begin. And uh, so uh, Paul is saying, look, we need to stay here at Fair Haven. And they said, no, we're not going to stay here. We're not comfortable. We don't like it. We want to do it. And let me tell you, friends, when you get to the place where you're not content with godliness and great gain, you're in trouble. When you get to a place as a Christian, you're not content with the things such as you have. And you're not content with your God where you are. You're getting ready to make a horrible mistake. Because traveling in this life without Jesus Christ is fatal. It is horrific. And so Paul tells him, I want to warn you. It's bad sailing, bad weather. You need to stay here. Because I perceive that you're going to be in great trouble. Well, they didn't listen to Paul. And Paul went on, uh, the, the ship captain went on. The, the scripture says they sailed to uh, Mera, the city of uh, Lycaea. There the centurion found a ship, Alexandria, sailing to Italy, and he put us therein. Now, the Alexandria ship was an Egyptian ship, and thus it was a bigger ship. So it was, you know, it was not powered by electric or powered by wind clean energy, whatever. <laughs> Hello. Is anybody listening to me tonight? And so this ship was a big ship, Egyptian ship. I am told that this ship would be 180 foot long, 60 feet wide, and 45 feet deep. This Alexandrian ship is going to be hauling not just prisoners, but according to verse 38, it will be loaded down with wheat, grain. And so they set sail with 276 of them on board and a load of wheat. They're taking cargo to Rome. Prisoners to be gladiators. Paul to stand before Caesar. And here they are. And so they're going to hug the coastline because of the weather. They're going to hug the coastline. And they're not going to get out in the middle of the Mediterranean. They're going to hug the coastline. And because they're hugging the coastline, some of the sea names will change to a different name. It's kind of like the Sea of Galilee. Then you have the Sea of Gennesaret. Then you have the Sea of Tiberias. Guess what? It's all the same lake, Galilee. But they call Tiberius, the lake of uh, Tiberius, because it is at Tiberius. They call the ship, the, the sea, Gennesaret because it's there at the gathering, Gennesaret. And so don't get hung up on names. They are sailing the Mediter Mediterranean Sea. They're making their way up the coastline. And because they're sailing close to earth, there's danger. And I want you to know, for you and I, we got our own little ship too. And because we're sailing close to earth, there's danger. Earth has its danger. We're going to face storms. And they get pounded pretty good in these storms when they leave Fairhaven. They get pounded up pretty good. It says in verse 7 through 12, Paul gives the weather forecast. I've already mentioned. And you know, 
They didn't believe Paul. Paul says, stormy weather's coming. Storms are coming. You've got, you got a whole generation today, a world full of people that don't believe God's weather forecast. They don't believe the wages of sin is death. They don't believe the preacher. Paul, you know, I watch television, the weather forecast, and they usually get a real pretty girl to do the weather. She ain't got a clue what she's talking about, but she's, you know, and they get a real pretty girl. It don't help the weather at all, but the scenery's better. And Paul's standing up there in front of his green sheet behind him, you know, and he's giving the weather forecast. He said, you're going to die if you set sail. You're going to get hurt. And they didn't like to report. The, the master, the sea captain, and the rest of the centurion said, well, we're going to believe the master of the ship and the sea captain because, Paul, what do you know? You're just a preacher. You know nothing about sailing. You know not, But Paul knew everything about God. And Paul knew everything about life. And God, Paul knew everything about living in prayer and walking with God. Paul knew everything that they needed to know. And let me say, friends, you may not have a lot of wisdom in technology. You maybe don't have a lot of wisdom in mechanics. You maybe don't have a lot of wisdom in mathematics or and I mean, may be wrong. You may be a physics genius. I don't know. But you maybe don't have a lot of uh, uh, great abilities in some areas. But if you know Jesus Christ, you're the smartest creature that walks planet Earth. If you know Jesus Christ, you are a sharp, intelligent human being because Jesus is all we need. And then we need to listen to him. We need to listen to the weather forecast, God's weather forecast. God's weather channel. Look up here. Look up here. Welcome to God's weather channel. Ain't I cute? God's weather channel. You're going to die and split hell wide open if you don't turn to Jesus Christ. The weather forecast, you're going to face stormy weather. The weather forecast, it's coming. Life may be, uh, the, the, the soft south wind may be blowing. You may think you have attained your purposes, but I'm here to tell you a big one is on the way. The storm is going to come. Are you listening to me? And Paul gives the weather forecast, and I'm giving the weather forecast. I don't care whether you're a teenager a middle age or a senior citizen, whatever your age is, there is stormy weathers ahead. And you better stay close to fair haven. You better stay close to Jesus Christ. Because if you don't stay close to Jesus Christ, you're headed for a storm and it's going to be hellish. Amen? And Paul says, you better not get out there but they did. Notice in verse 13, and the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close but Crete. We're okay. Preacher, don't worry about us. We're okay. I've got a good job, got some money. I'm okay, preacher. Sure, I'm not as fanatical about Jesus as you are, but we're okay. Yeah, soft wind's blowing gently. But there's coming a storm. Hear me. The winds will blow and great will fall the house. Those that do not listen to Jesus Christ. The storm is coming. The wind is coming. And you better be solid on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. Because if you are not built your house on a rock, the word of God, the things of God, your house will collapse. Your ship will sink. Amen. How's that for a weather forecast? But not long after their smooth sailing, there came up a, a tempest wind. Temp a tempestuous wind. That, any word like that means it's windy. Called or a lockdown. You think? That sounds like a killer. And when their ship was caught, there it is, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught with adversity. You're going to get caught with storms. You're going to get caught with hard times. And when you get caught, you'll not be able to bear up under the wind. And notice what they did. We let her drive. 
Well, you got to be really smart and brave to let her drive. Amen? It got so bad, we just let her drive. Now, some of you are sitting there, and you're about to think something you shouldn't think, but it's true. (laughs) you got to watch who you let drive. And we just let her drive because we didn't know what to do. We couldn't hold up under the storm. And let me say this. You're going to face things in your life that you're not going to be able to drive through on your own. You're not going to be able to handle it. You're not going to be able to hold to the stern. You're not going to be able to hold to the, to the waves. You're going to just have to let go and let God. You're going to have to let her drive. But may I suggest to you some names of her? Let's call her worry and fear. And when you let worry and fear drive, you're done. You're graveyard bait. You're done. You're at the bottom of the sea, fish bait. You're gone when you let worry and fear drive. But why don't we let, I got another name for her. Let's call her Grace. Let's let Grace drive. Let's trust God, let's believe God, and let's let grace drive. And when you let grace drive and you trust God, God will bring you through it. You may go through a lot of hard times, but God will bring you through it. How about letting her drive? How about letting the grace of God drive? How about letting the Spirit of God drive? How about letting the goodness of God drive? How about letting faith drive? How how about getting your hand off the steering wheel and let God drive? How about letting go and letting God? Believe in God. Because the Scripture says in 15, the ship was caught, and you're going to get caught in some things in life. And you're going to discover (laughs) you shouldn't have ever grabbed it. Or you wished it hadn't have grabbed you. Amen? I mean, when I was a little boy, my mom and dad always told me, don't let a turtle bite your finger. Because if a turtle ever bites your finger, it won't let go till it thunders. How many ever heard that? And I got my finger in the turtle's mouth, and the turtle bit me. It clamped down on me. And the sun was shining, and there was no thunder. So I went, whoom, whoom. And the turtle went, whoom. And I went, whoom, whoom. And the turtle went, whoom. What am I saying? I'm saying I was a stupid little boy that ought to knew better than to put my finger where I put it. Amen? My whom is about to get me in trouble. But anyway, but Paul says, I told you so. I love this phrase in verse 21. Paul said, I told you so. I told you that you, what you're doing, but it's Paul says, but I told you so, and after a long abstinence, Paul went and And some say they just a long time and not eating, but I believe it was a long time Paul was seeking God. Paul says, you should have listened to me. Now, preachers shouldn't say, I told you so, but it feels real good when we get to. I mean, you know what I'm saying. And then he says in verse 24, don't you worry, be of good cheer, because God has given you to me. Isn't it beautiful? That God has given some people to you and me to pray for, to love, to honor. Amen. We'll pick up next Sunday night. The Lord will and the church don't rise. But whatever you're facing in life, let's bear under the storm. Let's let Jesus take. Because Paul said, God has given you to me. And, and God has given you some people, too, to pray for, to love, to nourish. And, and Paul says, be of good cheer, because I believe God. Paul was saying to them people on that ship, you ain't got no faith, but you can use mine. You don't have no strength, but you can use mine. 
How many know that there's some grandkids out there that need to use your faith? There's some loved ones out there that need to use your faith. Amen. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You got to admit this chapter 27 is a pretty cool chapter. If I ever get out of chapter 27, uh, you know, if I can ever get my nose out of chapter 27, we might move on to other books. The turtle got me. Home. You say, well, what did the turtle do? Well, it never thundered. And finally, the turtle let me go. But not quick enough. And my mom said, I told you so. Thanks a lot, Mom. And that's what Paul said. I told you so. So there are things in our life that we're going to face, and we need to put our trust in Jesus. Amen? I just love the Bible. I love the book of Acts is incredible. I love preaching the gospel. I love serving the Lord. I love the good word of God. Amen? So if you ever get bit by a turtle and the sun's shining, there's no thunder, go, hmm. Say, does it work? Nope, don't work at all, but you'll get some practice going on. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're giving invitation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I never even thought about that. Got my finger caught in the turtles. That, that would be a pretty good little article to write. Yeah, make the turtle famous and me stupid. All is open. Is you, are you going through a storm? Are you going through a hard time? Have you had to let other drive, other... Maybe you need to come forward tonight and say, I want to let Grace drive. I want to let, I want to let her drive. I want to let Grace drive. I don't want fear and worry to drive. I want to let Grace drive. I want God's mercy to drive. Would you come forward right now? Come to this altar and say, I'm here because I'm going to a storm. And I need God's strength. And I, I, wanna, I need the prayers of the saints. I need the stability of the Pauls and the Peters and the James and the Johns. I need the strength to bear up under the wind.